Let's take a look at our customizer. One thing you have to make sure is that you're logged into the website. You can actually create a design uh, using the customizer and not be logged in. The problem is you won't be able to uh, download that file after you create it. So make sure you're logged in first. I'm in the digital printing part of this design here. So we're going to go ahead and try that customizer. So we'll get this window. Once this window uh, opens up, what I recommend you do is click on the image. And you can see right here in, at the bottom, it says full image is uh, 10.86 inches by 14 inches. Uh, so that's a full size uh, image. So I take this guy here and I push him all the way up until I start losing the actual image itself. So we can see the top of my boundaries there as it cuts his head off. Uh, when I move to the left here, I'll start taking the ear out, that sort of thing. So I know this is my workspace. So I got a, quite a bit of workspace here uh, to work with. So I'm going to make sure we uh, utilize most of that stuff. So we're going to leave him here. Let's add some type. So we, right in here, it says enter your text. Let's try down under. All right. I'm going to move it down under. Uh, and we're going to make it larger. And I'm just going to grab it and drag it. We can spread it out this way. Um, you know, make it stretch taller. You can hold the shift key to constrain the proportions, that sort of thing. Um, you can choose from fonts here. So, you know, all these different fonts we have available. I'm just going to go with this first one here. So uh, you can see it's cutting off the R. So we want to make sure that we move it over. But you can see we're too big. So with this different font, it changes that size. So we're going to reduce it a little bit and kind of put it here. You can choose all these fonts. We have an effects button here. So here's where it says normal. If I click on it, we can check, change it to a classic arc, right? I can do a classic arc going this direction, uh, vertical arch, and then the uh, another vertical arch here. Um, that looks extremely exaggerated, right? Way too much of a bend, but that you control the amount of bend by this top button here. So we're just going to pull it back down this direction and make sure it's not quite so overly exaggerated. So we can go ahead and push it in. I want to make it look like he's sitting on the type. I think that'd be kind of a neat idea. All right, so we kind of have it positioned. We have the effect that we're looking for. Let's go ahead and colorize it. So since we picked the digital printing file, that means we got full color capabilities with this particular design. So I'm going to go to my solid color uh, tab here. And I can change it to any color we want just by pushing a button here. So let's go get ahead and uh, give him a red. If I wanted to, I can come in here and go to the gradient tool. And I can say, hey, let's go from blue to white. That looks good. We can change the direction of the gradient itself. So uh, this is not as powerful or nearly as powerful as Corel or Illustrator, but it is pretty powerful. It lets you create some pretty neat things. I can change a texture here, uh, add a texture into the artwork. We can make it a color, you know, color one, color two. We, there's a lot of power in here, even though it's extremely easy and very simple uh, interface to use. But I'm a, I like solid color, so we're going to go ahead and add a solid color. So now what I'd like to do is go back to my fonts, right? And see where it says font outline. If I click on that, I can actually stroke this thing with a color. So let's try blue. So I'm going to click on my blue. I get my little checkbox here. And if I hit the return button, it gets me back to this window. And this is where I can adjust the amount of stroke or outline on the text. I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to do that. So now I said I wanted this thing to look like he's sitting on the type. Well, he's behind the type. So if you look at the top here, we can add things. We can remove uh, elements. We can duplicate things. We can undo. I can redo. And I can clear it out all together. But uh, what I want to do here is I want to send it to, uh, backwards. So if I click on that button, it changes the order. We only have two things in the stacking order. We have an image and text. Now, as long as my text was selected, I can send it backwards uh, by clicking on that button. I can bring it forward again by clicking on this one, uh, that sort of thing. So it's really easy. So that looks pretty neat. Uh, if I click off of the image, you know, inside my, my working space, but off of my elements, uh, we can kind of see where we are. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to add a little maybe wildlife refuge underneath it, right? So if you see this add uh, link up here, if we click on add, it's going to add some text. And we're going to come up here. And let's just do that. Let's do uh, wildlife refuge. Why not? And I can change the fonts. So scroll around, find something I think is a little bit more suitable for that little element there. It looks pretty good. Let's make it a little larger, maybe. You can move it around, move it up. 
and again click in my imp working space but offer the images to take a look and see what it looks like I think it looks pretty good but let's make him a different color so hit the solid tab here and let's just make it blue I think that looks pretty good since we're logged in we have a download button here when we finish it so now if I click on this download button it's gonna download the image to my computer uh, so let's go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what it looks like it allows us to download a PDF or a PNG if I have a digital file here my digital files are all PNG files I can bring it into rip softwares for DTG printers and whatnot Photoshop whatever it might be so I'm gonna go ahead and use the PNG again so I'm gonna save it as a PNG and it's gonna go ahead and build that file we get this dialog box now that says you, you downloaded a file here what do you want to do with it I'm just gonna go ahead and save it so the design downloaded let's go ahead and find it it should always be in your downloads folder whether you're on a Mac or a PC so there it is I'll drag it out and every single image that you download will come in as downloaded design as the name of it so I would recommend clicking on that part the name and renaming it that way it doesn't overwrite anything if you uh, do multiple images so there it is so let's open it up in Photoshop just so you can see the resolution and size of this guy so now I'm gonna go to the image menu I'm gonna come down to image size so what we can do is take a look we have a almost 19 inch file by 17 or say almost 18 17 and a half inches at 300 pixels per inch so we can take this guy and go to any digital printing we want it's plenty enough resolution